Hey YouTube, I'm now five and a half weeks into my recovery from an Achilles tendon rupture. I've taken the non-surgical route or the conservative route and if you wanna have a look at the reasons and why I went down that route or the background around the injury, please click above in the link and you can look at my week one video. So this is uh, now, as I mentioned, my f I'm, I'm in my uh, sixth week, uh, just, just starting the, the f uh, I've just finished five weeks and just saw my surgeon yesterday to get an update. And he looked at my tendon, um, he was really happy with the way it was healing, he could feel the tendon all the way, he can't see a gap, he can't feel a gap I should say. Uh, he also moved my tendon to a 90 degree level slightly and he said, can you feel that stretch there? And I said, yeah I can. And he said, that's a good sign because it means we're not healing long, which is obviously one of the risks that I'm concerned about um, because some people sometimes can heal long and then they have to go back to square one with surgery if that was to occur. Um, but it, as, I, as I mentioned in my other videos, the main way to prevent from healing right long is you've got to be in that plantar flex position from day one um, and never stretch past neutral position with any kind of physio, especially in the first eight weeks, uh, to ensure that tendon heals correctly at the right size. So we're happy with that so far. Um, he's pretty comfortable. And one big milestone was we took out the first wedge. So remember, I've got three centimeters of wedges in my boot and um, this is one centimeter taken out, so now I'm at two centimeters. So um, I'll show you what the walk looks like. So I've only had this out for a couple of days now and you, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Um, so you can compare it to the week before because I've been fully weight bearing now for approximately a week and a half. So it may not be too different, but I'll show you what it looks like. So as you can see, still a little bit of a limp as expected because we've got the boot and the boot holds your tendon in place. So it kind of all rocks um, at the same time. So you're always gonna have a limp while you've got the boot on. Um, and on that point about rocking, I didn't talk about this in my last video. Just be aware that the actual boot has a rounded bottom. It's not a flat square bottom like you normally see in a sneaker. And they do that to make sure you can roll through the walk and your tendon doesn't need to get used. And because of that, you just gotta be aware when you are fully weight bearing that uneven surfaces are a bit difficult. So even when I'm walking on grass that's not even, I find it difficult. Um, and I also find it difficult um, around even some, some levels of concrete, you know, when I'm in the streets. So be aware, you know, you gotta keep your crutches close by. Um, I don't always carry them around. I just generally leave a set at work, leave a set at home. Um, and when I'm out, I might just carry them in one hand even though I'm not using them. If I ever get to a situation where there's a decent hill or if I've got some uneven area, so like, like grass, I'll then use the crutches very quickly um, just to get across them. So be aware that you can't completely throw the crutches away at this stage. You probably need them nearby because the, the rocker boot sole will uh, prevent you from smoothly getting through some of those areas. So going back to the surgeon appointment, um, yeah, so that one wedge has been taken out and uh, I've now got two centimeters. Every week I'll take one out um, so far I've had no pain. I, I was a bit concerned going into the meeting, you know, will I feel more pain? Is the tendon's gonna be working more? Um, I've had a little bit of dull pain, but then when I went to feel where it was, it was more in this high calf area, which I was pretty happy with because that kind of tells me the calf is starting to get a bit of a workout because there's less stability or less support in the boot now that one of the wedges have come out. So, um, so yeah, you might feel that, but I don't think that's a bad thing. They always say sore is good, um, but pain is not good. So a little bit of soreness is okay because it means your body's starting to use those muscles again. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, I'll take a wedge out every week and then that takes me to week eight where I'll see my doctor again. And by that stage, we should have had a week of neutral position in the boot and we'll be going into sneakers, um, which is the time where we're gonna be really careful about not re-rupturing. Uh, on the topic of re-rupture, um, I asked the doctor when are we kind of in the safe zone and obviously you're never completely in the safe zone in the first 12 months but he said after six months you know you'd have some pretty strong confidence that we're out of the you know we're kind of in a safer zone so that that's kind of the goal from that point on when we're out of the boot um, in addition to that um, I also want to mention that one of the differences between the protocol that this doctor gave me and other doctors or other protocols I've seen out there in the world is that he kept me in those three wedges all the way up to week five. And then, as I mentioned, we're taking one out every week to get to week eight. Um, some people will start taking wedges out earlier or will start with less wedges in their boot, like only 
two wedges. Uh, I'm actually really happy we stayed in three wedges all the way to week five because it gave me the opportunity to be fully weight bearing for a good solid week, week and a half. And I was really comfortable with my walking before I took the next wedge out. Um, I wouldn't have been, wanted to be in a situation where I wasn't that comfortable with walking or I'd, I was just starting to uh, weight bear and I'm already kind of getting closer to a neutral position. I just think that would have been tougher on the, on the, on the foot. So I'm happy that we stayed in that plantar flex mode for a bit longer um, whilst walking until I, and then when I'm really comfortable with it, now I'm starting to take it down. So I'm happy with that part, but just be aware this is one difference between my protocol and some of the protocols out there which tend to go to neutral a little earlier. Um, other things we talked about was ultrasound. I, I asked him, when can I do it, um, where there won't be too much collagen showing up, and he said probably three month mark. I also mentioned to him that I found a study out there which showed that people who rupture one ankle or one tendon are more likely to re-rupture, or not re-rupture, but rupture the other leg, the good leg, at some stage of their life. Um, and the research tends to conclude the reason that happens is because generally the people who rupture one, there's a reason. There's probably some sort of generational damage going on with the tendon um, from various activities. You know, that's why a lot of athletes tend to rupture their Achilles. You know, they've been playing soccer all their life or basketball all their life and, you know, there's a lot of wear and tear. So I, when I learned that stat, I realized that one of the things I want to do is I want to get both ankles, um, both tendons um, ultrasounded when the time comes so I can see if there is any kind of damage or any, any generational issues going on with my good leg. And even then, regardless of what the findings are, I'm going to rehab my good leg as much as my bad leg. So any exercise to my bad leg, I'm going to do it on the good leg. And I'm going to, uh, because I just don't want to be in that position again where something like this happens. And on that point, on the way out of the surgeon's office, I met another guy who just ruptured two weeks ago. Um, and he stopped me because he saw my even up platform. He said, where do I buy that from? And I told him you can get it online. And then I asked him, how did your rupture occur? And he said he was just jumping into a pool. So when you hear stories like that, like some really simple stories that are non-sport related, as in non-acceleration or basketball or soccer, it does get you a bit concerned. He was only 40 years old, looked like a pretty athletic kid. Um, although he's a man, he's being 40 years old, he's not a kid. But that did um, also remind me, you know, I'm really gonna work hard on these tendons going forward, you know, even when I'm past the nine, 12 month mark, because I think it's important to keep him healthy uh, for the future. Uh, the other thing I want to mention was I start, started to think, when I saw that research about generally people who rupture have probably got some sort of generational damage anyway occurring in their tendon before the injury, I started wondering what have I changed or what has happened which could have led to that occurring with me. And one of the things I noticed was a week before this injury, um, my golf shoe, um, all the spikes under had worn out. Uh, and I basically took it into the pro shop to get them redone. And when they redid them, as you can see, these are all brand new spikes now. These bottom ones were completely gone. So if you look at that one, which is completely gone, they, these two were both, both looked like that. But they managed to get a brand new spike back on here. And this one they said, look, I'm sorry, we can't do it. So as soon as I saw that, I was like, well, I can't even use these shoes anymore. And I bought a new pair, um, which is a bit annoying because I wasted the money on the spikes. But, you know, it would be good if they told me before they put them on that they can't put one on there. But anyway, I was thinking about it afterwards. And I was thinking to myself, I just wonder whether that contributed to the damage and the wear and tear in my tendon because I didn't have support in that base. And when you're playing golf and you're swinging, there's a lot of pressure put onto his front foot, especially in the heel area. You press down into the heel area. And if I had no support, in these back spikes, maybe, you know, the, the the tendon was doing a lot more work than it needed to. Now, look, I'm just hypothesizing right now. I don't know if that's the real reason or the or, or, or if, that, if that contributed to my injury, but it's just something which I've thought about and something which we should all thought, think about in the future in terms of the gear we use. Um, and that reminds me of another study I found where they actually did some analysis around basketball players and said people who have high tops are less likely to do their Achilles tendon than guys who had no high tops. So I thought that was an interesting piece that I, I discovered. So for all you basketball players out there, high tops are the way to go. Um, don't go for the Kobe Bryant low tops, go for the LeBron high tops or something along those lines. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that piece of information as well. I also asked my uh, doctor around uh, when should I start getting soft tissue massage. I've got a bit of scar tissue, quite a bit, actually a bit, a bit of a lump there now. And he actually still said, let's just wait till eight weeks when, you, when I'll you know, let you go to physio. So that's a little bit different. I know some people who, going to uh, physio much earlier and they're getting soft tissue massage even from week two. Um, I'm not that fast, I'll wait another three weeks and we can go hard at the physio work then. 
Uh, and then the final thing is, in terms of my uh, range of motion exercises, um, he just told me keep going at that towel exercise, which I showed in my last video, um, which I think is an excellent um, range of motion exercise, which a lot of people don't do until much later in the process, and I've been doing them since week two. Uh, again, look at my last video if you'd like to see what that exercise is, but when you've got the towel around your foot and you're doing those, those um, they're almost like you're doing heel lifts, right? But obviously not doing your whole body. You're getting your calf muscle working from an early stage. And remember, one of the biggest issues with this injury is you're, you lose a lot of muscle um, in your calf area. And the hardest part is on the recovery process, not your tendon. Your tendon actually heals relatively fast. It's your calf muscles and the muscles around your ankle to get those muscles going again and firing again. That's what is the biggest hurdle, which takes a long time to get back. And therefore, by doing that towel, those heel raises of a towel, um, I'm calling them heel raises, but they're not. Again, look at my last video. Um, you are working those calves from an early stage and therefore hopefully you'll lead to less calf um, shrinkage during this process and it gets your body ready um, for that time when you start doing heel lifts and you know at the doctor he actually told me he put my foot against his hand he goes okay push against it and it was very easy for me to push and I feel as though because I've been doing these towel exercise from a for a long time it's actually really helped me and the only difference we're gonna have now going forward is he said be more aggressive with the towel. And I respond and say, well, I've been aggressive, as, as aggressive as I can be. I, I'm always really pushing hard against the towel and back. So I highly recommend that exercise. A lot of people don't do that till much later. And I've been doing it since uh, the start of week three. Um, and yeah, I recommend that as well. So that's where I'm at. Um, I'll give another update in a week's time when the next wedge comes out to see how the boot's feeling, if I can still not feel the tendon and, or any pain. And I'll show you my walk. Um, and then the other update I find, I, I, I come across or research I come across then. And uh, don't forget to subscribe down below. Um, comment if you'd like to ask any questions or give me your experience. And please like the video and I'll continue to bring more out every week um, when I have an update. So thank you.